Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm gonna show you how to replace or upgrade the SSD in your Xbox Series X and performing a clean install or cloning of the original SSD. The process is the same for the Series S, except for the disassembly part. By the way, I also have videos on how to troubleshoot your Xbox Series X, as well as how to clean the cooling system and replace the thermal pads and thermal paste. The links will be at the end of this video, so let's get started. For this project you'll need a T8 Torx screwdriver, tweezers, prime tools, a compatible M.2 2230 SSD, a USB drive, an M.2 to USB enclosure and thermal putty. I'll put links to all the stuff in the description below. So if you want to perform a clean install, make sure to install the latest updates on your console before you start disassembling it. Also, if you've participated in Xbox Insider program, you'll need to unenroll and wait for a new system update before continuing with this process. First, we need to download offline system updates. Open the Xbox support page, the link in the description, and simply follow these instructions. First of all, we need to download OC1 update. It's a 6GB file, and as I said before, you'll need a flash drive that's at least 8 gigs. And you need to format the drive into NTFS file system. After the download is complete, go to your downloads folder and extract the files from the archive. Open the OC1 folder and copy the system update folder to the root directory of your flash drive. Now we can safely remove the drive. Next, you need to disassemble your device. Remove the screw and pull out the drive. By the way, you can install this SSD into a compatible enclosure and use it as a super fast and reliable USB drive. You can also put that SSD into a storage expansion card like this one. I'll put links in the description. Even though I keep calling this method clean install, well, it's sort of, because we still have to utilize the boot partition from the original SSD. This process differs from Xbox One X, where you can simply install system updates from a USB onto a new SSD or hard drive. So, first we need to extract the boot partition from the original SSD. Plug the SSD into the M.2 enclosure and connect it to your PC. I'm gonna use Macroom Reflect, which is a very powerful tool and it's free for a month. So these are my laptop's SSDs and here's our 1TB external SSD with a bunch of partitions. Select it and click on Image this disk. Choose the first partition, then the destination folder, click the Advanced Options, select Make an exact copy, click OK, Finish and OK. Once that's done, you can safely eject the drive. Next, I'm gonna plug in the brand new SSD into the adapter and connect it to my computer. Now right-click on the Start button and select Disk Management. A pop-up dialog will appear asking you to initialize the disk. Select GPT and click OK. Let's go back to the Local Disks tab and click Refresh. Here's the new drive. Now go to the existing Backups tab, select the image file, click Restore, Next and Finish. Eject the drive and that's it. Slide the drive into the slot at an angle, gently press it down and secure it with a screw. Then apply the thermal putty onto the SSD surface, like so. I recommend using Apsara New 6 Pro, the link will be down below. Finally, reassemble your console. Now we can turn on the console and install the offline system updates. Once the troubleshooter screen appears, use the D-pad and A button to select Troubleshoot. Insert your flash drive into any available USB port. 
As you can see, the offline system update option became active. Select it and press the A button to start the update, which should take about 5 minutes. And that's it. Just follow the on-screen instructions to complete the setup process. Select your preferred language, location, your network, and sign in to your Microsoft account. Now let's check the drive capacity. Go to the settings, system, storage devices, and as you can see, we have 1.6 terabytes of available capacity. Here's a comparison of the drive capacity before and after the upgrade. So, finally install your games, and once your console syncs with your Xbox account, all your game saves will be back. Now let's talk about SSD cloning. If you're cloning your SSD to another same size SSD or cloning with automatic partition resizing to a larger one, the process is pretty straightforward. But it can become a bit tricky if you choose to do it the right way and clone all partitions as is, and resize only the user content partition. So once again, put the original SSD into the enclosure, connect it to your PC, and run the Macroom Reflect. The imaging process is similar to what we did before, but this time we'll select all partitions instead of just one. Make sure you have enough space on your drive, because the image file will be about 800 gigs. Once that's done, connect the new drive, click on Refresh, then select the image file, click Restore, then choose a disk to restore to, and click Copy Partitions. Ok, now we have an exact copy of the original 1TB drive, and as you can see we also have 1TB of unallocated space. So what we need to do is extend the user content partition. To do that, we need to move this unallocated space to the right of this partition. Also, we need to leave a couple of gigs of unallocated space at the end of the drive. Select the last partition, and click on Layout. Like I said before, we need to leave about 2 GB of free space after this partition. Like so. Now we need to move these two partitions to the right. Select each one and click Float Right. Next, we need to extend this partition to allocate the free space. Select it, click on Layout, then click on Maximum Size and click OK. Make sure that your partition layout appears as shown, and then click Next and Finish. The newly created disks will automatically open during the process, so just ignore them. Finally, reassemble your console. As you can see, by manually resizing the partition, we've gained some extra storage capacity compared to the clean install method. I highly recommend the cloning method, but if the original SSD is partly faulty, then the clean install becomes the only option. So I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.